Well, good morning everyone. Time for another ride and that means that Hey, those are tourists That means that I have to fill up and I really hate filling up It's a Sunday. I just filled this bike up once again. It's like every time I have to fill it up. It hurts and I am probably gonna go southeast there's a castle I want to go check out. I've All right, we're going to go to the beach. A lot of people have that in mind as well. You see this guy on the scooter. My God, there's a huge line going into Costa Nova, which is the left lane. Let's see if we can go through. Oh God, this guy to go over the speed bump is going like at two miles an hour. Oh, this guy is changing a tire in the middle of the road. Whoa. Well, I've given up on the beach for today. Just if something's this busy, uh, you know what, I'll just ride in everyday traffic in Washington DC and I'll get the feeling of what it's like. You know, the motorcycles, they do seem to filter through, you see them coming in. They're all going into the bar because I think they are doing like a little meetup. They do a meetup in the mornings there, but man, if I had to work that hard to, to go to a meetup, it's not worth it. This, but not bikepacking. Yeah, they're fully loaded. Look at this. I ran into this area. It looks almost like a United States type of setup with the the grass. It's called the Mita Village. Of course, near Mita, the town of Mita, but this is a private community. It almost feels like I'm in like somewhere on the west coast in a private residence. Look at this. But I just got to check this out. Look at that. They're building new houses here. They're all like in the a weird style that I'm not used to seeing. It's not so much the Portuguese style. It's very different. These must be like vacation homes maybe. But it feels like... Like a very strange community. Because, uh, yeah, you know, they're building it off from the road. Which is good. But it feels like the United States with grass. By the way, surrounded by national forests. And you see there's like quite a bit of wealth here. A Tesla. Yeah, this is a very expensive area. I think this is more like immigrants buying here. Or maybe vacation homes for the wealthy. That's how it feels like. where I can go right here by the <laughs> I don't know if you guys realize but look at I just want to show you the soil this is why I don't want to go into it because it is the type of soil you will sink in and then won't be able to get out now if they put this gravel yeah that's perfect but look at the soil you can only do this on a like a nice dirt bike like you sink in you see that this is deep, deep sand. And I just don't have a lot of experience riding that. I know that people ride here. I know that people drive four-wheelers here. It doesn't seem that bad in the grass, you know, like the where it, it's growing. But look at this. Yeah, that bike will just sink in quite a bit. But also, this is perfect for camping. So I'm like looking around, maybe I'll come here and camp. I kind of like that. I like the isolation. See, these roads I don't have any issue doing. But, you know, I'm like looking at some sections and they're like very deep sand still in there. But look at this. I mean, it just keeps going on and on. This is what the Africa Twin was made for. Well, actually, the Africa Twin can do deep sand. It just... I know. I know that everybody, like, looking at these videos, they're going like, yeah, you know, all of these guys, they go off-road. You know, I don't have that much money. If I drop this bike and I break it, I don't have any other money for another bike. That's the thing. I think that a lot of the YouTubers, they have millions of subscribers yeah like yeah they drop it okay break a 10,000 euro bike no big deal they just get another one but for me this is it this is my bike this is the one i have 
and you know this thing I've ridden it all over Switzerland Italy so many times and it's always been a very good bike it's simple yeah people go like oh my god that's so old I haven't seen one of those in forever people love it are there any berries here let me see no they're all gone the Portuguese pick everything off There's a lot of these roads. Oh boy. This bike is so freaking dorky. You would not think it's dorky, but it is. And it's also very flickable. Keep in mind, I am just not very experienced riding off-road. And when you take like a CRF 250 and you ride off-road, that's so easy. But when you take a bike like this, that's heavy, Riding off-road is a whole different thing. I think I am somebody's land now. This might be the way to go. Oh, no, that's it. You see, like, people use this stuff to get to their farms. Like, and having a GPS would come in useful. Today is Sunday, so the good thing about the farming is that it's on hold. Porsches do not do stuff on the weekends. I've always liked riding around the windmills here. And this is easy, like it's nice and flat. But once you get to the northern part, you'll see the, the dramatic look change. I mean, it's kind of, yeah, yeah, look at that. I see the Atlantic back there. Oh boy, man, this deep sand. Jesus Christ. Look at this to the right there's another road that cuts right through but if you look at that that's deep 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 sand at least if it's uh, surrounded by trees like this it's not gonna have a lot of crazy sand but that's uh this one's still okay this is where how oh yeah this is deeper sand this is how farmers get to their their lands. Oh no, that's uh, that's deep sand right there. Yeah, we should. See, this is the problem with this bike. It's so big that even turning it around is a uh, a big thing. All right. Oh my god, I'm already sinking in. Alright, so this is what I'll do. I'll stop. You see that? You have to be careful because I don't have knobbies. Alright, put it in first gear. Oh boy. And then you get stuck. There we go. Yeah, this is uh, why you have to be careful. I keep passing through here. That the Portuguese love is picnics. They're really big into picnics. This, there's a sign for a dolmen. I want to see if I can find this. Dolmens are fascinating. 
I don't know if you know what a dolmen is. It's essentially what Stonehenge is, but they're all over Portugal and Spain. They're burial sites and I guess sacrificial sites. So usually, even around my village, there was one and when I lived there, I never realized there was such a thing. That's how little we got out of our little village when I lived there. So I'm gonna see if I can, I can find it. Yeah, I can't find it. I, I, I doubt it's like straight this way. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not good yet. But yeah, lots of berries everywhere. This is it. Look at this. This is the dolmen. I mean, this... Who knew it was here? But this is Neolithic. People thousands of years built this as a burial ground. This one doesn't seem to be that impressive. It's falling apart. They're not maintaining this. But, yeah. Our little ancestors built this as a burial ground. I'm going to show you some uh, more impressive ones because this one has definitely been taken over by by the earth. I was wrong. It's not Neolithic. It's even older. It's Megalithic. So that's 3000 BC. Ahead is Montmore Uvelu. We're gonna go and check it out. Because they always built these castles in a perch so you could like shoot down at whoever was invading. And you're gonna see that a lot of times these castles are very small. You see that? Look at this. So it's pretty interesting that this divided the Muslim side from the Christian side. A little chapel here with a bell. I've always liked the bells ringing here. Let's go inside this tower here. Now this is interesting. This little doorway was for shooting arrows at whoever was invading. You can see how it's angled this way so you can shoot out but not get shot in. You have very limited amount of distance that they would have to clear. And here's the little chapel inside the castle. So right there, that's where we came in. That's the chapel. And of course, surrounded by all the towers on each corner. This is the Christian side. That's the, the dangerous Muslim side. The one that wanted to invade and did invade. See, that's the thing. River, it's called the Teju or Tegas. Some people would say it got conquered by Muslims, the Moors, and for over 300 years. Can you imagine that? It got invaded by the Moors, and the Moors were trying to get to this section, but they defended very well against the Moors here, and that's how Portugal eventually got their independence again. Look at this uh, tower. So this would be what they would be looking at. All of this. So they got one tower there. You know, one line of defense, another line of defense. Another one here. I wonder if they did play football back in the day. little windows for shooting arrows. That's Montmore Mul Value here in Portugal, southern Portugal near Coimbra. Really cool spot. Normally you have to pay to get into places. This one's free. I think a lot of castles are free. But Portugal, one point, you just get it in your head, it was this powerful 
as the United States. That's why when you ride around Portugal on the motorcycle, you see all of these crazy houses. Because at one point, these old historic houses were very wealthy people that lived in it because of the spice trade and the power that they had and influence that they had over the oceans. Of course, this is uh, the Portuguese were the first people to go all around the world uh, by sailing. So kind of an incredible feat that they have. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.